This little guy here is very interesting. This is the Sony Alpha 6000, and it's currently my total favorite. I, I can't even tell you how much fun I've been having with this camera, even though it may not look like it's a professional camera. As a professional photographer, I can't really see why you wouldn't be able to use this. I mean, after all, it's got a hot shoe for shooting flash. It has the ability to fit all of the larger Sony lenses with this cool little adapter. And if you are currently in the Nikon or Sony systems, you simply need to get uh, what's called a Metabones adapter. And you can stick any of your uh, system lenses on it and shoot with this tiny camera. I mean, it almost looks like a lens cap for the back of this thing, right? But this is a camera that I really am super excited about. Now, let me tell you why this one's actually kind of the ultimate camera for shooting action shots or, uh, I, I mean, I shoot a, lot of, shoot a lot of photos of my children. I think this one is the perfect one uh, for shooting action or uh, photojournalism or anything indoors. And, and a lot of photographers used to use cameras this size, uh, what they call the viewfinder, uh, I'm sorry, the rangefinder size, like the old Leicas. And a lot of the photographers actually really like, the famous photographers like the look and feel of these little things and the ability to pick them up and shoot. I really like how small this is because, let me show you how tiny it is. It's basically just I mean, it's really small, so, but it will be able to hold all of the different lenses. It'll hold the E-series lenses, and it will hold uh, the regular uh, full alpha lenses, plus with adapters you can fit Nikon or Canon uh, other lenses. So let me tell you some exclusive features of the Sony mirrorless systems. Now, this one's full frame, this one's APS, but they both have tracking very, very accurate tracking across the frame. Now, all the Sonys do this. Now, the reason why they're able to do that is just like your iPhone. Your iPhone, as you notice, when you're about to take a picture, there's a little square that kind of goes around the person's head. Same thing happens with these Sony cameras. The Sony A9, the A7, A77, all have tracking focus and it's really cool because you don't have to crop and refocus like a regular camera. So let me tell you what the struggle is for the typical Canon and Nikon shooter. If you're shooting in a backlight situation for example you have to override the exposure by telling the camera either to put it on spot metering so that you would focus directly on the subject or you would basically have to use exposure override and open up the exposure so that your subject would be in focus. Then on top of that you have to move your focus point to the eyeball of the subject that you're shooting if it happens to be a person. So that means you're doing two things at once. You're basically taking your camera and you're overriding the exposure or changing the exposure mode to spot or whatever. And then you have to focus and recrop or select the focus point. What this thing does is it's got this really cool feature that's called eye autofocus. And this is something that you can program as one of the buttons. And when I press that and I'm taking a portrait of of, say one of my kids it will basically light up just the eyeball which I think is a pretty amazing thing and then it will fire the other thing it does is this one has 197 different phase detection autofocus points which basically covers 97 percent of the screen that even beats the a7 a7r because the a7r basically has well the a7r only has contrast detection, uh, contrast autofocus, which is kind of a limitation compared to the A7, which has phase detection. All the other alphas that I've ever known have the superior phase detection autofocus. But this one has phase, phase detection autofocus across the entire screen, 97% of the screen. So if your subject moves from left to right or whatever, it's going to track that subject. So imagine that you can now focus and expose for the eyeball and the face or track a certain individual that you want to track across the frame. It also shoots a really crazy 12 frames per second and in this sequence you can see basically that uh, my boy has dropped a toy and it basically caught the toy on the way down and on the rebound. So one of the really fun things to do with this thing is and in my uh, premium channel I'm going to basically show you menu by menu. There's a hundred and 
80 something odd menu choices and 25 different uh, tables to choose from when you're doing the setup. Uh, in my premium channel, I'm basically going to take all of these different cameras and show you exactly how to work them to get the best results without having to figure out what all the other functions mean. I'll ba basically get you to shooting uh, very, very fast. So. What's really fun with this one is to put the camera on aperture priority and then put the camera on you know the different settings that I'm going to suggest to you and then when you're shooting with say a lens like this one which is a 1.4 50 millimeter lens do the eye autofocus and grab the eyeball and then shoot or if you have uh, your subject kind of moving across the frame it will track that subject and focus and expose for that subject now in a situation where like this where you have just a ton of backlight and you're uh, and, and you've got your subject off to the side, in a Canon or a Nikon with an optical viewfinder, I would have to lock on that subject, hope that person doesn't move forward or back, and then uh, I would have to change the metering. So I'd have to either override the metering for backlight situations or whatever. On this one, it does it on the fly, 12 frames per second. This is what 12 frames per second sounds like. So this is what 12 frames per second looks like with a Sony Alpha 6000. This is with object tracking on and I've got the aperture wide open to f1.8. Right there, boom, she pops the bubble. And there it goes. That's 12 frames per second. Now here's another thing. As you can see, I've started to uh, follow the ball around. Oh, look at this right here. So he reaches out and bang hits the bubble. So now I am focused on the boy. I've got it on face detection autofocus. So there's all these other things flying around, but you'll notice that the boy is in focus. This 12 frames per second is really fun because there's so many moments in between moments that you can pick up. So if you're shooting sports or anything like that, it's pretty amazing. And it's pretty amazing. So at 800 bucks, this is really hard to beat, and that's including the, the chintzy little uh, 18 to 55 uh, 3556 lens or something like that. But what's cool about this is that you can put on with this uh, adapter any of the Sony Alpha lenses. I happen to be using a Sigma right now, but Sony also makes Zeiss lenses, which is from my old days with the Hasselblad T Stars. Uh, it has that same kind of uh, Vario sonar and the red dot and everything like that. So, very very high quality glass they have Zeiss uh, but I really like the Sigma lenses also so I use the Sigmas and uh, what I like about the Sigmas is they have faster speeds they've got a lot more lens variety than you would find with the Zeiss's uh, Zeiss has very limited lens quantity so one last thing I want to explain is that on the a6000 or the a7r you can only use that eye autofocus function when you're using the e-series lens specifically for these cameras you can't use the adapter and uh and another lens and have the eye autofocus works that that is the only limitation. Now, some of you may not really ever use eye autofocus, but if you're shooting with a very, very high speed lens, like an F1.4 shot wide open, those of you who are, uh, you know, photographers that like to blur out the background, have a beautiful bokeh, you understand the frustration of trying to find that eyeball, focus on it, recrop, or move the joystick until it's on the eyeball, and then hope the person doesn't move. With this, you basically have the eye autofocus function, which is really cool. The other thing that uh, I want to just point out out, and I'm sure Sony will fix it, but it, this will save you a lot of frustration, is the direct link to Facebook will not work unless you turn off notifications uh, on your Facebook security features, because if it w is looking for a browser that it's never seen before, it'll ask you for approval, and it'll throw this guy into a little bit of a confusion. So that's basically it for now, and uh, just uh, check these guys out. I have been shooting this thing all weekend, and I I just absolutely think it's the most awesome thing. All right, so thank you. And uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And also, when the premium channel comes out, the subscribers will get an announcement and we'll take all of these cameras and show you menu by menu what are the best selections to pick for the best high-performance photography for whatever you're doing. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.